Hey, Julia. Sorry I never messaged you after I got home last night. Thanks again for having me over for dinner. I had a great time. And your cooking is really amazing. Aw, thanks. I'm glad you liked it. I was worried that my cooking isn't fancy enough for a city girl like you. What? That is crazy. Your food is the best. If I could, I would come over every night to have your meals. I'm flattered. But I only make easy stuff, so it's nothing, really. Besides, you have all the selection and money to spend on posh meals, don't you, Miss CEO? <laughs> I bet you liked my food because you haven't had something simple in ages. Stop it, Julia. You're teasing me again. I am a CEO, but my team is still super small. I make as much as everyone else. So, I'll have to save my extravagant meals for when I get rich in the future. Oh, don't be so modest. Your company is doing so well now. I read your interview as one of the emerging leaders on the web the other day. You said that you were making profit. Woohoo! We are making profit. But it's nowhere near our goal yet. So, like I said, nothing posh for me just yet. I like your food better anyway. It tastes like home, you know? If you didn't have a family to look after, I would hire you as my personal chef. If I had more money, that is. <laughs> now you're just buttering me up, Tracy. <laughs> But hey, if you like it that much, maybe I can stop by once in a while and cook something for you. Seriously? I would totally pay you for that. It doesn't have to be that frequent. Perhaps once a week? Is that too much? No, that's not a problem at all. You're only 30 minutes away. The thing is, I have been thinking about picking up a part-time job since Natasha started going to school. I was thinking about working a couple of days a week, maybe for like two or three hours a shift. I don't want to start anything too technical, so I was considering babysitting or housekeeping. Why didn't I ask you sooner? Gordon and I have been so busy lately that our house is a huge mess. We just can't keep up with the housework anymore. If you can come over like twice a week and help us out, that would be so great. I would feel much more comfortable having you come over and help rather than hiring a professional housekeeper. I'll pay you plenty so it covers for your gas too. What do you think? Are you sure though? I mean, you would pay me for doing your chores? Absolutely! Our needs are perfectly aligned. And you know, it's just me, so we can be very flexible with schedules. You can come over whenever it's convenient for you, and do whatever you think is best to keep the house clean. If you want to come after Natasha's school, you can even bring her along. Oh, that sounds superb! I'm going to talk to my husband about this as soon as he gets home. The only thing that was holding me back from taking on a part-time job was Natasha, because she gets sick all the time. I was so worried that I would have to cancel on my clients if I ever got called in from school, you know? So, if I can work for you, I don't have to be as worried. I mean, I will do my best not to ditch you, of course. It's okay, I totally get what you mean. This is what I call a win-win. I can trust you with my keys and pass some housework to you, while you get some cash, but work with full flexibility. I wish it was this easy at work. <laughs> I bet. Oh yeah, I forgot to check with you last night. The game I gave Natasha, did I get the right one? There were so many similar ones that I was worried I picked up the wrong one. It was the right one. 
She was so happy that you got her that game. But she'll have to wait to play until her fever dies down. She's sleeping right now. Oh no, again? She seemed totally fine yesterday. I hope she gets better quickly. When she does, tell her she can ask me if there's something about the game she doesn't understand. Because Gordon said he has played it before. He's happy to guide her if she needs it. How nice of him to offer. Thanks, I will be sure to tell her. How are things with Gordon? Have things gotten better? I didn't ask yesterday in case you didn't want my husband to know anything. There is nothing to hide, but thanks. I guess we are fine. I don't really know because we don't spend much time together anymore. I barely see him at home. How come you both are so busy? It's not me. I don't like working late, so I go home for dinner every night unless I have an urgent matter to take care of. Gordon used to be the same too. But right now, he's super busy because a couple of his co-workers quit. Now he has to do more work. I am guessing he volunteered for some of it, but a majority of it was just pushed onto him. His company's like that. He works so late and leaves the house much earlier than I do every day. I'm so worried that he's going to break down at some point. I bet you are. Well, just another reason for me to support you guys. I'm going to have to make healthy meals so he at least gets enough nutrition. Eating is one of his favorite things to do. He would be over the moon to find out you're going to cook for us on a regular basis. Anyway, I should get going now. Let me know what your husband thinks. I will also let Gordon know of our plan. We'll talk about when to start after we get feedback from our boys, yes? Sounds like a plan. I know my husband won't say no. In fact, I think he'll be very happy for me. I'll let you know anyway. Talk soon. Gordon, are you okay? It's past 10 p.m. now. Are you still at work? Yeah, I think it's going to take me another while tonight, but wow. I didn't even realize it was so late. How does time go by so quickly? Honey, I've been wanting to tell you for months now. But I think you're overworking. You work so late every day, I've barely seen you. And recently, you've been working during the weekends too. Are you okay? I'm so worried about your health. How come you're so busy? I'm alright. Besides, I'm not the only busy one. I know you work long hours too, having a company to run. My hours are not that long, usually. I mean, sometimes I have to see clients over dinner or attend events on weekends. But even when I am very busy, I still make time to rest. The way you have been working is crazy. You have zero time off. Maybe you're right. But I don't get to decide how much or less I work. I'm just an employee to a company. If I have a problem with the workload, they'll just tell me it's my fault for not being efficient. Or worse, they could even tell me that I'm free to leave. So I really don't have a choice but to stay enslaved for them. You are not sleeping well enough, though. And you don't even know how long this situation is going to last. You know you can't go on like this forever. Perhaps you should consider changing your work environment. What? You mean to quit my job? I'm saying it's always an option. I know you have a lot of pride in what you do, but there are other companies out there that would treat you so much better. And if you prefer, you can take some time off before you move on. You deserve it. After working hard for so long. I don't have any problem supporting you for a while until you figure out what you want to do next. Why would you say such a thing? 
You're making me feel miserable. What? How am I making you feel miserable? I'm worried for you. You don't understand. Everyone at work knows you're a business owner. My colleagues are always mocking me, saying how lucky I am to have a loaded wife. So if I quit work and you support me, it just proves to them that I'm dependent on my CEO wife. Wow, oh, I didn't know your co-workers said such things. I know that you're just jealous, but I actually care about my work, so it kills me when they say things like that to me. What I want to do right now is to prove them wrong. I want to work hard and show them I can bring good results and shut them up. I want to win their respect. I get it. You are so dedicated and I'm very proud that you think that way. As your wife though, I am extremely concerned. You only come home to sleep. If you have time to sit on the couch, you just sit there and stare at blank space. Don't you see your mind and body is sending you a sign to rest? I'm just meditating. I'm fine, I swear. I won't tell you to quit work if that's not what you want. But you at least need to secure time to rest. You should make a rule that you won't work after, say, 9pm or on the weekends, maybe. Are you crazy? I'm saying I have to deliver the best results among my co-workers. How am I going to do that if I don't work while everyone else is taking a break? Gordon, you are not listening to me. Hey, you know, there's a long weekend coming up in a couple of weeks. Will you do me a favor and rest during that long weekend? Please? Why? My sister and I have been talking about us hanging out. It even has an outdoor jacuzzi. It'll be us two and their whole family. What do you think? It should be nice and relaxing. You'll get to refresh yourself. I already have plans that weekend. You can go with your sister's family. I really need to concentrate on work. Fine, then. Oh, Gordon, please just know that I am worried about you. Because I really am. At least know your limits, okay? Okay. I won't go over my limits. Oh, I almost forgot. Julia made some soup today while she was here. I saved some of the container in the fridge, so help yourself when you get home. You can warm it up in the microwave for a couple of minutes. She has a lot of healthy ingredients in it for you, and it tastes amazing. I'm sure you will love it. Alright, I will have to try some later. I appreciate that you both care for me. Anyway, I need to get back to work. Don't wait up for me, okay? Hi, Tracy. Do you have a minute? I need to talk to you about something. Yeah, sure. Actually, I was just about to ping you, too. You were? What's up? Is everything alright? Well, you know our weekend cottage plan we were talking about? I told Gordon about it, but he said he can't come. He says he needs to concentrate on work because he's trying to deliver results right now. Oh, is that so? That's too bad. But, to be honest, I kind of knew he was going to say no. What do you mean? Well, listen, I'm sorry for what I'm about to say, but Natasha has been telling me that Gordon scares her. Gordon scares her? How come? Do you remember when you came by to have dinner a little while ago? Natasha had asked me so many times if Gordon was coming with you. I told her no, but she just had to confirm with me over and over again. At that time, I just thought Natasha, being a shy girl, she was just nervous about seeing her uncle because she doesn't see him that often. But then, I told her about our plan to go to the cottage, which included him, as far as we had planned. And she kind of freaked out. 
She literally turned pale and said that she doesn't want to see him because he scares her. Really? Why, though? Did Gordon do something to scare her the last time they saw each other? As far as I can recall, I think they were playing a video game together. I thought they were getting along fine. She told me that they were fine until then. But a few weeks ago, after they last saw each other, Natasha saw him coincidentally when she was hanging out with her friend and her mom. And it looks like that encounter triggered it. What was he doing? You see, it's not what he was doing. I don't know how to phrase this right without freaking you out, so I'm just gonna say it. But Natasha has a sixth sense, if you will. Huh? I know you don't believe in spiritual stuff. Frankly, I never did either. And we don't want to scare anybody, so we've never shared it. But I don't know how else to describe it, other than that she can get extremely frightened of someone or something. Or she would refuse to go somewhere we had planned to without much reasoning. Okay, I'm listening. It's totally crazy, but her sensor has helped us before too. This one time we visited the mall, but she suddenly started to cry, saying she didn't want to get out of the car. She was petrified of something, so we ended up leaving. When we got home, the mall was on the news. Because some idiot was walking around the mall with knives in both of his hands. My husband and I just looked at each other. Oh, I am getting goosebumps again just thinking about it. What? You know how Natasha gets a fever so easily? I'm starting to think that it's because of her sensors. She must pick up information other people don't, so it had some kind of stress or emotional impact. And her body reacts by raising her temperature or something. I don't know the mechanism, but I think it's related. Sorry, I know I'm not making any sense to you. You probably don't believe any of this. It's certainly not easy to digest. But you never believed in that kind of stuff before. So you're telling me that makes it kind of believable. But let's say what you are telling me about Natasha is true. Why would she be afraid of Gordon? Well, this is the hardest part to tell you. But I had to look into him because I couldn't figure it out either. And from what I found, Tracy... I'm so sorry, but your husband is not a good person. He's full of lies. You shouldn't stay with him. What? I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have done anything without your consent, but I didn't know how else to find out what he was up to. So I hired a private investigator. What did you find? How was he full of lies? Come on, Julia, just tell me. He's cheating on you. With three other women. And he's stealing your money. Excuse me? He's doing what? I think Natasha has become scared of him because she noticed that he's pretending to be someone he's not around us. She must have sensed his dark side or something, I don't know. No way. You are a very professional person, so I know you manage your corporate money well. But I bet you have less security for your personal savings, don't you? Have you been keeping track of your bank account every month? Do you keep your ID and password out of sight? You should look into it right away. Damn it. I think you're right. I just checked my savings online. There's a lot less than what should be in there. I should have noticed it sooner. I'm such an idiot. Ah, I knew it. The private investigator reported to me that he's been acting like a sugar daddy to his girlfriends. 
He's been spending on anything she asks for. But I knew he's not that rich, so the P.I. and I suspected that he was using your money. The P.I. took some photos of them for proof, and I also have a full report with me. You should look through them. Are you okay? Um, I don't really know how I feel right now. I trusted Gordon, so I'm a bit confused, I guess. Do you want me to come over? I can come to your office if you want. I'm so sorry I have to tell you all this. You must be in shock. But you should see the proof and report for yourself. I can bring it to your place after you're done with work. I do want to see them, but not at my place. Is it okay if I come over there to yours? I don't want to go home, not when I know he is going to be back at some point. I don't want to see his face. I understand. And yes, you can come and stay here as long as you want. I'll head over in a bit. Okay, I'll be here. Drive carefully, please. Tracy, is everything all right? I haven't seen you in a while. I know you said you've become busy at work, but you haven't been home at all, have you? How are you doing? Yeah. What do you mean, yeah? I'm asking how you were doing. Has something serious happened at work? Is that why you haven't been home? Don't tell me your company has become bankrupt. Why do you think that? Well... Nothing like this has ever happened before, so it must be serious, right? Or else you wouldn't be stuck in your office for so long. Tell me what's going on. Are you worried about me? Or are you just worried because you can't take out money from my account anymore? Huh? Take out money from your account? What are you talking about? I'm just genuinely worried about how my wife is doing. You don't have to lie to me anymore because I know everything. And by everything, I mean I know you have used my ID and password to steal money from my account so you could buy your side chick some goodies. You just messaged me because you realized you can't log into my account anymore. Well, guess what? I'm done letting you steal from me. And you know what else is done? Our marriage. I am divorcing you. Whoa, Tracy, hold your horse. Are you kidding me? I'm not cheating on you. You know I'm too busy to do anything like that. I've been working my ass off day and night for months now. Let me correct you. You have been acting to work your ass off. But in reality, you were just working someone else. You were never in your office at night or on the weekends. I have proof of it too, so don't bother making more excuses. A private investigator has been keeping an eye on you. And I have records of my money being taken out. I am reporting this to the police so that they can track down the IP address. No, you got it wrong. You were just misunderstanding. Misunderstanding what exactly? Explain. You are the most important thing to me in my life. I admit that I slept with someone else and I'm sorry but it was nothing. I swear. I was lonely, but there were no feelings at all. I was just testing myself. Yeah, that's it. I did it to see if my loneliness would go away, but it only made me realize how important you were. Huh. <sighs> you sound so stupid that right now I can't remember anything that was ever good about you. Hear me out, Tracy, please. You are a successful woman, whereas I'm just an ordinary office worker. So you see, I felt miserable and lonely. I've become jealous of you and needed someone to fill my misery. It only made me realize how much you mean to me. You haven't explained which part I am misunderstanding. You just admitted that you'd been cheating on me. You haven't said anything about stealing my money, but you haven't denied it either. So I'm guessing it's true. So tell me, what am I misunderstanding? I'm saying I've had my reasons. But it doesn't even matter anymore because... I now know that you were the only thing that matters to me. It was a one-night fling, nothing more. Funny. Because the PI report here says you've been seeing not one, not two, 
but three women regularly. Among them include Anne, who you have been telling you want to get together with her. I never said anything like that. Well, you have, you scumbag. I met Anne in person. Maybe the other two were flings, as you say, but not Anne. Or at least, you pretended to be in a serious relationship with her. She showed me a message you sent her, saying how you wanted to divorce me as soon as possible so that you could marry her instead. It's not what you think, Tracy. I was just playing along. She was annoying me, so I tried to satisfy her so that she would stop. Well, if what you are saying is true, you just made things worse. Not that I believe you for a second, of course. You know, Anne was very happy that I finally knew about you two. She was mocking me, saying that she was sorry for taking away my status as the wife of a CEO. So when did you start your own company, Gordon? What a surprise. I didn't even know I was the wife to a CEO. Um, you're misunderstanding again. I just lied to her because I didn't want her to know my real occupation, that's all. You know, just keeping my personal information safe. Oh, Gordon, honey, you don't have to pretend anymore. It's all good. See, I get to divorce a scumbag like you, and you can get together with your petty girlfriend who is only interested in your status. It's what you wanted, right? So why don't we be happy about it? No, that's not what I want at all. I don't want to get a divorce. I want to stay married to you. I love you. No, you don't love me. You just wanted to stay with me because you love my money. By the way, I had the P.I. look into your reputation at work. Holy crap, Gordon, you are seriously the worst employee any business could have. It wasn't your boss who was saying you were slacking because you were married to a business owner. It was you! You've been telling your co-workers that you didn't have to work so hard because I would take care of you anyway. That you didn't care if you got fired. I was being sarcastic. I may have said something like that to act strong, but I didn't really mean it. I really have been working really hard to deliver results. Don't you know how much I care for my work? Stop lying to me. You really don't know where to stop, do you? Next time you lie, you should check if I have my grounds, because I probably do. I have already dug up your dirt. All of it. I know you've been dumping all the work on new members in your team so that you could leave the office at 5 p.m. sharp every day. Then you would head out to luxurious restaurants with your girlfriends and buy them expensive jewelry or handbags using my money. I have it all, Gordon. You lying son of a bitch. I'm sorry. I was wrong about everything. Please forgive me. You should have apologized right away instead of making up excuses. I can't believe how pathetic you are. I can't believe I never saw your true side all this time. You have to give me another chance, please. I love you, I really do. You are all that matters to me. I did everything I did because you were too great. I lost confidence because you were so successful. I was just pretending to be a bigger person than I really am by acting rich. I don't care why you did it anymore. But don't you dare tell me you love me. Because if you really did, you never would have betrayed me and hurt me like this in the first place. So cut the crap and just divorce me. Are you sure you want to do that? Do you realize you'll have to pay me divisions? I will not go easy on you. I will ask for the full half if you try to divorce me. Have fun trying. You're not getting anything from me. This can't be. I know you made tons of money since we got married. You always act so modest, but I know you have it. First of all, the money you have been stealing from me is the money I have had saved before we got married. I have a different account for the money I've made through my business which I started after we got married. Therefore, you're not entitled to any of the money you took from me. You stole it without my consent. Therefore, I am suing you and you will pay me back every cent. I am also suing you for emotional distress, and apparently so is Anne because you faked to be in a different person. 
I've already hired a good lawyer so that I can avoid paying you as much as possible. From what you have done, I wouldn't count on getting much at all. You're just saying that. Am I, though? I guess we will see. But wow, Gordon, I honestly thought you were better than this. What an idiot. I guess that makes the two of us, though. Because I'm such an idiot, too, for not seeing it sooner. Anyway, we're done. You should be receiving a petition real soon. I'll see you in court. Tracy, forgive me. I won't cheat on you ever again. I will never lay hands on your money either. Don't divorce me, please. Why on earth should I forgive you? I will never. You don't deserve any chances. And I don't have the energy or time or money to spend on a moron like you. So goodbye. I love you from the bottom of my heart. Tracy, listen to me. I will push myself harder so that I become good enough for you. I will do as you say. I will work really hard to make up for everything, so please, give me one last chance. I'm not that naive. In fact, I'm smart enough not to repeat the same mistake again. I was an idiot for letting my cheating husband use my money once. I refuse to let that happen ever again. So no, no chances for you, ever. It's actually kind of funny how you're panicking now that you've been cornered. I look forward to seeing how you change after our divorce and without my financial support. I bet you're going to end up more miserable than you already are now. A year later, our divorce was finally concluded. By that time, I had already won my case against him for emotional distress thanks to my topping class divorce lawyer. So although I had to end up paying him divisions, I got a significant amount back, which was satisfying enough for me. I heard that Anne had tried to sue him, too, for fraud, but had no grounds since he was the one paying for all of her expenses from my money, not the other way around. Unfortunately for her, after Anne's parents found out that their daughter stayed in a relationship knowing Gordon was married, they were completely enraged and made contact to me to apologize for what she's done. They generously offered to pay consolation money, which I decided to take under the condition that Anne would pay her parents back. To my surprise, Gordon was fired from his company around the time of our divorce. Apparently, one of his co-workers had proof that Gordon was seeing one of his girlfriends during work hours. We all know he brought it upon himself from being a very irresponsible employee, dumping work on other people's plate. I bet he was not expecting to lose his job, too, but I really don't feel sorry for him. I'm just glad that I found out sooner than later that my husband was a lying sleazeball. I've been living on my own since, but because Gordon was never home anyway for the later part of our marriage, nothing's really changed. Sometimes I think about the good memories with Gordon and feel very sad for what happened, but Julia and Natasha keep me company often. It was a horrible experience to be betrayed by someone I used to love, but my family's support and kindness has helped me keep it together. I think it'll take more time for me to say that I'm fully recovered from the awful experience. But I will keep my head up high and do what I can to stay positive. One day, I hope I can laugh my past off and say with confidence that I'm happier than ever.